This isn't just a crock. It's much more to me than that. Let's make something weird. I wanna wear Crocs, but like the wrong way. A couple years back, there was like this trend of people putting Crocs on their dog's heads and stuff like this. I saw that and was like, I wanna do that too. Obviously Crocs are too small to fit on my head, so I think we're gonna have to 3D print it. So let's get over and model it real quick. All right, so I picked up this model online of a Croc. Uh, it's pretty good, uh, but it was not modeled with 3D printing in mind. This was meant for uh, renders and making graphics and stuff. So I need to prep it real quick and clean it up so we can actually use it. All right, so that is looking a whole lot better now. Uh, we were not able to salvage these buttons here that hold on the back strap very well. I'm gonna model up those uh, buttons myself, but first I think we're gonna go ahead and get this scaled up to the right size. I've got uh, some scans of my head that I took a while back. So this is actually a model of my head that I edited to remove my hair, but I just need to get this like within the ballpark. So we can take Flip it upside down, scale it up a bit. All right, so that, something like that. <laughs> oh, I'm getting excited. <laughs> this is so stupid. Okay, hold on, it's gonna fit like something like that. Let's bring it like all the way down. We gotta give it this thing its full chance. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is, okay. I think this is gonna work. If I want the strap to actually come around to my chin, I, I'm probably gonna have to make this strap a little bit bigger, unfortunately. So it won't be like fully accurate to a real croc, but I mean, no one's gonna notice and it still gives the right like essence of croc. Cause this is a hat, it's not going on someone's foot, so proving to be a little bit difficult. See, like this sort of thing, we don't want, we don't want my head peeking through here because if it peeks through in this 3D model that I've got of my head, then that means my head itself is not going to fit into this area. So I'm trying to get rid of all of these little blobs that are sticking out. All right, I think this is the scale that we're gonna be working with. Obviously I've got all this extra that's hanging off here off the back, but I mean like that's, that's what it would look like if I had a croc that was the size of my head. So it's what we're gonna do. I wanna keep the main part of the shoe itself, like the same proportions and everything, uh, but I don't mind stretching out the strap a little bit to make sure it fits around my chin. So I'm going to rotate that. It's gonna come out to about right there-ish, I think. All right, so if I take this now, I should be able to just as it's starting to curve. All right. Oh, it's lagging. Okay, it's not that bad. Okay, it's kind of bad. That's, that's pretty good. I mean, this there's some pretty hard transition lines here. I'm gonna see if I can smooth those out a little bit. I feel decent about that. Yeah, I think I can sand that down a little bit more once we get it printed, but even if I don't, I mean, I think that's, that's pretty good. My beard is poking through, but my chin is actually a little bit shorter than that, so I think that's gonna be fine. Uh, I'm worried about it not being fine, but I think it's gonna be fine. All right, we'll go with it. So we're gonna cut that out of the crock, I believe. Just double check and making sure I'm not gonna be cutting out anything that I don't want cut out. I think I'm cool with this. Okay, yeah, that is basically what I'm wanting. I'll smooth these this out a little bit more. But yeah, that should be good. All right, I think that's, that's basically ready. I'm gonna do some little final touches and then I think we'll be good to go. All right, so I think we were looking pretty good. I added these little buttons that stick out that's going to allow uh, the strap actually to hold on and actually be movable. What I need to do now is cut this up into pieces so that I can print this efficiently. All right, I think I'm going to split it along where the button is actually. And then when I put the strap on, it'll like, once I get things glued together, that's gonna like help hold the thing together and keep it from falling apart. Plus it'll hide the seam a little bit more. I think that's gonna be the way to go. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Gonna flip this one around. Alright, so I'm gonna save these and I'm gonna move them over to my slicer software. Alright, so I've got everything over here in my slicer software. And once we got things sliced up, it's looking at a little over three days. I think that is gonna be the fastest that we can do this without sacrificing too much quality. So I think we just go for it. See y'all in about three days. Alright, so now that we're done cosplaying the Pope, let's actually get to work. You gotta combine these two halves together and I'm going to use super glue for that. I could have used like some positioning pegs and stuff in order to make these really line up well, but I was convinced that I would be able to use some zip ties and stuff right around where the strap goes around that peg. And then as soon as I grabbed the zip ties I realized that they were actually way too short in order to go around all the way so in a panic I got up and I ran over to try to find some bigger zip ties and stuff but unfortunately in the amount of time that it took me to try to figure out some sort of solution the super glue had already dried so the crock was just slightly misaligned now and there is nothing I could do about it. it that's just how it is now and so that's, that's fine. That's just how it is. I think I'll be able to sand it off. I'm not really worried about it. And that now brings us over to the sanding and painting process. I start out just by giving a light coat and some filler primer. This is specifically formulated to fill in gaps really well. To smooth out the more flat surfaces, I use an orbital sander. And for the tinier little details and stuff, I just use some regular sandpaper and a Dremel tool. Now I'm gonna be using this stuff called Bondo to fill in some of the larger cracks on the crock. This is a very popular product in 3D printing because it fills in gaps very well and is super sandable. It's really easy to get a very smooth surface with this sort of stuff. There's a lot of different schools of thought on how much Bondo that you could use. I generally tend to be a bit more moderate with my Bondo use, only applying it to the gaps and cracks that really need it that are more problematic. But I oh, oh. all right. Well, I, I mean, I guess they don't call me Bondo boy for nothing. The benefit of using this much Bondo is you can get a very smooth surface much more quickly rather than spending too much time sanding. You just want to smooth out big globs as much as you can to make sure that this is a very thin coating across the entire part. And once you're all done with that, it's a pretty smooth part. Like you can hardly see any of the layer lines at all. It looks really good. So I gotta go through the sanding process again and then I gotta do some more primer. Doing the same sort of stuff all over again but that's just how it is. So lastly, I'm gonna get all the dust off of this and I think it's now time to add the final color. I'm a bit nervous about this because this isn't the exact color that I was wanting to get, but I think this was the better color to get. The one that I was originally gonna get probably wouldn't have been as good as this. So I'm glad I went this route. 
So now I believe the croc is all finished painting and ready to be assembled. I went ahead and painted the little buttons that go on the sides just off camera because it wasn't super interesting. But they seemed like they're going to fit pretty well. So if I go ahead and take off the tape here, I should be able to get a nice good bond between the plastic with some super glue. There's a couple different glues that you can use for bonding 3D printed parts together. There's some that like actually melt down the plastic and like fuse them together permanently, but super glue works really well with DLA and I don't really feel like splurging the money on getting a super specific glue that I can only use for 3D prints. Super glue I can use just for whatever I want, so it works fine. And after I take off all these clamps, they seem like they're on there pretty solid and it looks really good, like it looks like a legit thing. So now we gotta go ahead and cut out the logo that's gonna go on the sides of the buttons. Uh, I went ahead and got that cut out on my vinyl cutter out of some white vinyl. It seems like they came out pretty good. I don't really use my vinyl cutter all that often, but I'm kind of proud of how they turned out. I opted for cutting out my logo rather than a croc logo just because I wanted to brand the croc as being mine. But I do need to be really careful when I'm applying this because when I'm putting this vinyl on top of this spray paint, I will not be able to remove it again or I will have to completely re-sand the entire thing, like just completely start all from scratch. So uh, oh, there's little bumps here. Okay, no problem. Yeah, we'll just get these out. They can push down pretty easy. Yeah, we're all good. So we're going to get all... Ah! It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. It's it's all good. I, I it, it looks fine. I learned from my mistakes on this other side, and I think it applied much more cleanly. I'm much more proud of how this one turned out. Yeah, look at that smooth pull and these little bumps. They came out really easily. I'm not really worried about that one. Nice and pretty. Okay, I think this is the moment. This is it. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my. This is so, uh, this is weird looking. This is, this is a little bit cursed. Oh wow. I, I mean, it's a croc. Like, kind of, like if I just like, is it just a croc? I mean like, uh, let me just do it like a rotation. Let me just like. This is one of those moments where like if I went back in time to like eight year old Austin, would he think this is cool or just weird? This is, this is something new. I can't get over the texture on this thing. It looks like a freaking croc, dude. It's a croc. So of course, if I'm making a croc, I gotta make all these gibbet things. I used to call them charms when I was a kid, but apparently the official word for them is gibbets. So I couldn't actually design them the same way that real gibbets work, because they wouldn't be able to like punch in like real ones. So you gotta screw them in from the back, but I think they turned out pretty good. This thing is so big. Okay, yeah, this, this really sells it. Oh my gosh. What is this? I hate it, but I love it. Oh my gosh. I don't know how to pro, like, how do you pose with a croc on your head? Like. I feel like a modern medieval knight. Onward, attack the enemy. It's me riding a horse. It's like a motorcyclist. I'm trying to make this cool, but it's just weird. This is probably one of my favorite things that I've ever made, um, other than my daughter. Well, if you've made it this far in the video, Congratulations. Um, I'm willing to bet you're probably just as weird as I am. So we should like be weird together and you should subscribe and stuff. And if you really like my weirdness, you should go support me on Patreon. It really helps me out. It allows me to continue doing this. I don't know what this is. 
but uh, it's probably worth subscribing for. <laughs> I've got some exciting projects coming up here in the next couple months. I would highly recommend uh, sticking around so you can see those. That's a wrap, I guess. That's that that that's a crock. Oh, I got like laser laser. Is this cool or is this just like is this too weird? All right, bye, <laughs> bye. You should probably click one of those videos. Is this like a, a Monsters Inc. moment? Is, is I, I'm pretty sure my logo is like right over my face right now.